From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd said yesterday it is likely this year's national examinations will be held later than usual as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Speaking to reporters, the minister said education officials continue to be engaged in discussions with Cambridge evaluators and assessors to finalize the dates for the examinations. This comes after the 2020 GLAT, BJC and BGCSE exams were postponed several times last year in response to the pandemic that resulted in the closure of schools across the country. Given the late commencement of the 2020 exams, among other things, Mr. Lloyd said it is only natural that officials give some consideration to pushing back the tests for this year. He said a final decision will be made soon, at which point the public will then be informed. Attorney General Carl Bethel insisted the government will not be caught with its guard down again, telling the Senate yesterday officials are now in a critical race against time to have all the population vaccinated. During debate on the extension of the emergency orders in the Senate yesterday, which was passed, Mr. Bethel admitted that last July, the country let its guard down, an era that we paid dearly for. He also pointed to new, more infectious strains of the coronavirus, which are spreading around the world. He said while officials don't know much about how these new strains Act. It was important to maintain restrictions until most of the country receives the vaccine. A man was found dead yesterday on a track road off Graham Drive in Yellow Elder Gardens with apparent gunshot wounds. Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters told reporters on the scene that the deceased seemed to be in his mid-30s and that there is no indication that he is a resident of the area. When questioned how long the body had been there, he said it appeared that rigor mortis had already set in and estimated the deceased had been there about 12 hours. Shortly before 7 a.m., officers from the operations unit were on routine mobile patrol on Graham Drive when they were alerted by a concerned citizen that a body was found unresponsive on a track road. ASP Peters said, quote, those officers went through that track road, which runs parallel to Graham Drive and is commonly referred to as the Gulf. On their arrival, they found a Negro male lying on the ground unresponsive with apparent gunshot wounds. Emergency medical services were summoned. On completion of their examination, they pronounced that body lifeless. A gray car was being towed away from the scene as police processed the area. This is the country's 10th homicide, according According to the Tribune's records, police are appealing to anyone with information to contact their nearest police station. Bahamas Air Chairman Tommy Turnquist said yesterday the airline has not received any cancellations following the announcement of a new testing and quarantine requirement for travelers entering the United States. He also said neither has the airline seen an uptick in travel bookings. The new U.S. policy requiring all passengers entering the U.S. to produce a negative COVID-19 test before arrival took effect on Tuesday. Last Thursday, U.S. President Joe Biden also signed an executive order directing federal agencies to require international air travelers to quarantine upon arrival in the U.S. The move comes after local hotels and resorts began to reopen, with tourism officials already saying the new policies could be a devastating blow to the Bahamian economy. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Johnson & Johnson's long-awaited vaccine appears to protect against COVID-19 with just one shot, not as strong as some two-shot rivals, but still potentially helpful for a world in dire need of more doses. J&J said today that in the U.S. and seven other countries, the single-shot vaccine was 66% effective overall at preventing moderate to severe illness and much more protective, 85%, against the most serious symptoms. There was some geographic variation. The vaccine worked better in the U.S., 72% effective against moderate to severe COVID-19 compared to 57% in South Africa, where it was up against an easier to spread mutated virus. After opening itself to New Year's revelers, Dubai is now being blamed by several countries for spreading the coronavirus abroad, even as questions swirl about the city-state's ability to handle reported record spikes in virus cases. The government's Dubai media office says the sheikdom is doing all it can to handle the pandemic, though it has repeatedly declined to answer questions from international press. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. Strong high pressure is building over the Bahamas while a cold front exits the southeast Bahamas this afternoon. Beachgoers should refrain from entering the waters due to the high risk of rip currents and dangerous surf. Motorists and pedestrians should exercise extreme caution for water intrusion overtopping seawalls and coastal roads, especially along the Fishing Hole Road in Grand Bahama and the Glass Window Bridge in Eleuthera. For all areas, it'll be 
cloudy, breezy, cool to cold through tonight. Small craft operators should remain in or near port. Winds northeasterly at 15 to 20 knots with higher gusts. Seas 4 to 7 feet near shore and up to 9 to 12 feet offshore in moderate to large north and northeasterly swells along Atlantic exposed shorelines. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 73 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 59. The sun will set this afternoon at 552 and will rise tomorrow morning at 653. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.